In this video, we are going to find all natural numbers x, y, and z such that 3 to the x plus 4 to the y equals 5 to the z. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. This problem looks special to me because the base of the three terms, 3, 4, and 5, are primitive Pythagorean triples, which means 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So we can quickly tell that x, y, and z to be all equal to 2 as well as the solution triple. Before I really start to uh, solve this problem, let me introduce the tools that I'm going to use to solve um, this equation. Um, they are um, properties in modern arithmetic and uh, the Euclidean algorithm, as in I'm going to calculate GCD of some expressions and I have to use uh, this algorithm to um, kind of reduce it. So throughout, um, the, uh, pro throughout the solving process, I'm going to um, take mod on both sides, well, um, mod some number, well, uh, and then the question you might ask uh, is that how do you come up with those numbers? My answer would be that they are mostly intuition and um, such intuition can only be accumulated by um, experience in solving such problems. So if you wish to um, acquire such intuition, just watch more of my videos as I'm going to present uh, more equations of this kind in the future. So the first step that I'm going to take is to take mod 3 on both sides. So as 3 is congruent to 0 mod 3, so the first term is then 0 plus 1 to the power of y is congruent to minus 1 to the power of z mod 3. Because 5 is congruent to minus 1 mod 3. So then we have minus 1 to the power of z is congruent to 1 mod 3. Which means z is an even number. Now because z is even, I can write said to be 2k some positive integer k. Taking mod on both sides is important because then we can determine the at least the parity of our variables. So now the equation becomes 3 to the x equals 5 to the k whole squared minus 2 to the y whole squared. And notice that the right-hand side is now a difference of squares, so I can factorize it. And we have 5 to the k minus 2y times uh, the sum of 5 to the k and 2 to the y multiplied by its difference equals to 3 to the power of x. Then, because the product of these two expressions of these two expressions is a power of 3 so that means both of these expressions in green must also be a power of 3 however notice that they are actually um, co-prime because we can find um, the TCD of these two expressions so notice that I can use the Euclidean algorithm here by, say, adding up, adding up the two expressions. So it's equal to 2 times, or maybe I put it this way, 5 to the k plus 2 to the y, and I'm going to add um, these two expressions together, and it will become 2 times 5 to the k. Now, the GCDs are equal. And notice that this has also to this also has to be a power of three. That means the GCD of some expression and two times five to the k has to be a power of three. And in particular, that power of three has to divide this expression. But it's impossible because all the prime factors that um, this um, this expression labeled in blue 
uh, the prime factors are 2 and 5 only. So the only possibility is that this GCD is equal to 1. So that means the expressions labeled in blue, in, labeled in green, are actually equal prime, as said before. So that means one of them has to be one, and the other will take up all the factors of three. So therefore, I have this equation. At this point, I would rather remove the part, uh, the part of five because um, that is. Um, rather too large. So I'm going to um, subtract the two equations. Then I have 2 times 2 to the y equals 3 to the x minus 1. And rearrange it, I have 1 plus 2 to the y plus 1 equals 3 to the x. Now, of course, you may tr try to um, solve for k and y by simply looking at this equation. It's also possible, but um, I find um, dealing with powers of 2 and 3 um, relatively simpler, so I'd rather go for this method. Feel free to suggest uh, how you uh, solve by considering 5 to the k minus 2 to the y equals 1 in the comments. Now when we reach this stage, you may try to um, put some small values of x and y into this equation and see whether you can obtain any solution. So clearly, um, it will work when x and y are both 2. But if you try to put larger values of x and y here, then the powers of 3 and powers of 2 start to um, deviate. And uh, it's very hard for them to have difference to be equal to 1. So maybe you can try to establish some bound again, um, as in when y is at least a certain value, then you can prove that there is um, no solution. So in this question, I would set the bound to be y to be at least 3. So, because I cannot find any other solution after y equals 2. So, I would say if y is at least 3, then the index of the power of 2 is at least 4, because when y is at least 3, then y plus 1 is at least 4. So, I can say that 2 to the y plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 16. So that means 3 to the x is congruent to 1 mod 16. Now let's take a look at the structure of the powers of 3 um, mod 16, as in what will happen when all the powers of 3 are divided by 16. Let's take a look at the remainders. So the first one is, of course, 1. 3 to the 0 is equal to 1. 3 to the 1 equals to 3. 3 to the 2 equals 9. 3 to the 3 equal 27, so it becomes um, 11, and then 3 to the 4 is then 81, and that becomes 1. So uh, let's try a few more. 3 to the 5 is 2, 4, 3, and to calculate that quicker, I can just use the remainder above, which is 1, and multiply it by 3, and so that becomes 3, and you notice that the side, there's actually a cycle. So uh, we are repeat, repeating um, these numbers, 1, 3, 9, 11, and then we'll go back to 1, and the whole cycle starts again. So that means if I have a power of 3 to be congruent to 1, what, 16, it must be um, the first term of the cycle, which should be um, where the index are always multiples of 4. So that means, therefore, uh, 4 divides x, so I can write x to be 4L, some natural number L. Then the equation becomes one plus two to the y plus one is equal to 81 to the power of L because three to the four is equal to 81. However, at this point, it's kind of a magic, but uh, we can take mod 5 on both sides. Then 1 is still 1. And 2 to the y plus 1, let's keep, it that, let's, uh, keep that expression first, 2 to the y plus 1. Now, the right-hand side is e congruent to 1 to the power of L, which is 1, mod 5. So that means 2 to the y plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod 5, but that's absurd. 
because powers of 2 are never multiples of 5. So we have a contradiction here. Now the reason that we have a contradiction is that we have made a wrong assumption here, which is that we have assumed y to be at least 3. So that means, therefore, y is at most 2. So then we can check them one by one because there are only two possible cases left. When y is 2, then clearly we know that x equals 2 and similarly z equals to 2. Checking 3 to the 2 plus 4 to the 2 equals 5 to the 2, take. And when y equals 1, then we have 3 to the x equals 5, so no solution. This appears when we put y equals 1 back to this equation. So altogether, we only have one solution uh, triple, which is that x, y, z are all equal to 2. So that's our final answer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.